Welcome to our Grambling Township Board meeting for Tuesday, April 16th. If we could all rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now if uh, Clerk Robertson, you could call the roll. I would be happy to call the roll, Mr. Supervisor. Trustee Hugo. Here. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Trustee Fike. Here. Trustee Raritan. Here. Trustee White. Here. Treasurer Kilmer. Here. Myself, of course, I'm here. Supervisor Bennett. Yes, here. Seven members present, a quorum. Thank you. And now uh, I will entertain a motion for approval of the agenda if somebody cares to make that motion. Motion by Ms. Hugo. Motion by Hugo. Supported by Dr. Raritan. Supported by Raritan on the agenda. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Myself, yes. Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing. Motion passes. Thank you. And now we will open the floor for uh, public comment. And uh, first up, we have Miss Grover, Alice Grover. Good evening. Good evening. Am I talking into this well enough? Sure, yes, sounds <laughs> okay. good. Okay. I have three things, some of which may be talked about later this afternoon or this evening, I don't know. One is a request, if possible, the left turn now from Holly onto Baldwin and from Saginaw onto, onto Baldwin with the detour has gotten burdensome yes um i think all of the local traffic will move down to cook but but for people who really really long lines mm -hmm. with the um, 75 so that's one thing if something can be done because there are no turn arrows especially up at holly that would be useful second thing I'm wondering if the utility work that's being done at the corner of Baldwin and Saginaw is going to affect the beautification. I know Melissa will be talking about that later, or about beautification, so maybe she can expand on that. And thirdly, I noticed that the sewer extension that's coming um, from the north down, or between Oakland County and us, uh, we'll be going via Vassar Road. Is there any chance that, seeing as at least part of Vassar Road is not paved at this point, the sewer will be taking that road and then that Vassar would uh, be paved after the construction is done? So those are my three things. Thank you. Those are nice and concise questions. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, probably answer most of them tonight or try to. Okay, um, with that, uh, Mr. Tom Heckman. And thank you for your service, Mr. Heckman. I said I just did what I said I would do. I see you wearing your uh, disabled veteran's hat, so we appreciate your service. Well, that's part of my problem. Okay. I live at 7500 Porter Road, and the back of our lot backs up to the school that the woodland whatever the heck Academy. Academy. school it is to, to their their parking lot and thanksgiving time there was an electrician doing some work on the on the lights in in the parking area and he said that they were switching them over to to leds it's cheaper to run and I said, that's reasonable I thought, i'm doing that in my own house right. i don't have a problem with that at all when they change the lights over, the lights don't just shine down onto their parking lot. They shine out. Our house is 200 plus yards away from the lamps. And in my bedroom, there's four lights that'll come through that one bedroom window. I can see my mother's picture on the, on the far wall. The lights are that bright. And I go in the dining room and my shadow is on the inside of the front door, which is 29 feet away inside the house. Five lights come through in the kitchen. 
I'm a disabled veteran. I have a problem sleeping. And it's quite hard to stay sleeping if you got this. Right, light shining in your. I'm, I mean, they're terrible. I mean, I'm, I just, that's, that's a problem. I mean, good example last night, I went to bed at 11 o'clock, and at one thirty I was up already. Set in a chair. I spent most of the night in a chair. <clears throat> I need I need some help. I'm I I don't want to be a pain in the butt, but sure. You know I I need some help. And I've talked to Jeremy, and Mr. Laddie has written a letter saying that you know you guys can't do anything about it because it's a school. Uh, I tried talking to the state senator, and I got one of his people, and he gave me a bunch of runaround and uh, wouldn't type anything out. And what he said, you know, tell the dang uh, council to take care of it themselves. So, and my state representative, he never answers the phone. So, okay. Right. Well, we, we're concerned with uh, the situation and. Um, with school, you know, and speaking, Mr. Laddie, go ahead. Just quickly, and, and I know I did talk to Jeremy about that, and we, we are, we have, not, not only do we have limitations with charter schools and public schools, we, we're prevented from dealing with site plan issues and, and issues of control that we normally have. But I was just um, mentioning, <coughs> Superintendent Limita, maybe we can continue to look at it from a code enforcement standpoint, and maybe there's, maybe there's another angle we can take. I'm not, don't, don't be overly optimistic, but we, we're not going to give up on you. We're going to keep trying and see if there's a different angle we can take. If I can answer. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Hacker. I went over and looked not too long ago. I took pictures with my camera, but I can't download the dang things on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> but you have copies, or Jeremy has copies of all the stuff that I have so far. I went over there and looked at them the other day, and they look to be, and it's pretty tough. Looking up, they look to be on a square tube. If you turned them 90 degrees, so they'd be go along the length of the parking area instead of east and west, where it's flooding my backyard and my my house shows up white at night. That's so. I'll have Jeremy get in touch with you and, and see what what sort of other options we might have, and we'll we'll keep taking a look at it for you. Thank you. And we have Mr. Heckman's contact information here. Yeah, I'm right to, retired. You can call me almost any time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, seeing no further, uh, would you like to comment? Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Jeff Joyner. I live at 6454 Kings Point Road. Yes. And uh, I'm uh, here um, on behalf of the uh, Neighborhood Association for Kings Point, a subdivision. Um, recently, uh, you know, we've, um, we, I uh, sent an email to you to yes. about speed right. uh, within our subdivision before and after we get the paving done. Exactly. Uh, and I wanted to, to express my appreciation for your help and the, uh, the police chief's uh, assistance in uh, getting uh, data on uh, speed uh, data that's, that's within the subdivision. Sure. The nice thing about this is that what we found out was approximately two and a half percent of the, the drivers were found traveling between six and 20 miles per hour over, this, over the posted speed. So that means about 97.5 percent are within appropriate speeds. Mm -hmm. So that was a good finding to, to, to get yeah. uh, from, from this study. So, you know, we can, we can relay that to the, to the neighborhood and saying, look, you know, most of the people a good percentage of the people are actually, uh, you know, driving within reasonable norms. Yeah. With, uh, with, uh, with speed. So uh, we're real happy with that. And I appreciate uh, the police department's assistance in getting that, uh, that done and sharing the information with us. So uh, we are going to start uh, the final phase of our uh, paving project. Uh, the county is trying to get a meeting together sometime maybe this week to uh, start planning on you know, what, what needs to be done before we start paving. Okay. And hopefully, probably the first part of May, 
we'll, uh, we'll see that project uh, through to completion and um, very happy with, uh, with everybody's Great. help and we wanted to express our appreciation. Well, and we appreciate you uh, being concerned with those types of things and bringing it to our attention and you know, our chief being able to address that situation as well with the speed. But we also appreciate you uh, working so hard to, uh, you know, pave and maintain your neighborhood because that, that helps everybody in Graham Lake Township when our, our streets look great and the homes, you know, follow suit. So yeah. thank you for your work. Well, that's, there's a whole bunch of us that, uh, that I'll, I'll send that to. Okay. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, no further public comment. Um, okay, we are going to move on to a, priv a privileged presentation. Um, the board will hear a presentation from Nicola Odette from the Genesee County Metropolitan Planning Commission. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for letting me be here tonight. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to take up a few minutes of your time and tell you about two home repair programs that we offer to a low to moderate income Genesee County residents. Um, the first one is our home improvement program. We've actually been administering this one for over 30 years now. It looks at the entire home, uh, basically roof down to basement. We're looking for deficiencies in accordance with HUD housing quality standards and local code. So our inspectors are going to look for smoke detectors. They're going to look at the roof. They're going to look at your windows. Do you have enough insulation? That sort of item. Um, it's not a home remodeling program. Uh, the second program, the urgent repair program, we created just two years ago. Uh, we felt there was a need in the county for a spot repair program, uh, a program that addresses some of the larger uh, repairs. So that program only looks at your roof, your well, your septic, or your furnace, just those items. Uh, those can often be very costly. Um, Okay, so for eligibility, uh, we do use HUD income guidelines. Um, a person, a one-person household can earn up to $42,500 a year and be eligible. There is an income chart in your packet. A uh, four-person household can earn up to $60,650 a year and be eligible for these programs. Uh, some of the other requirements, uh, the applicant has to have lived in their home and owned their home for at least a year. Uh, mortgage payments, taxes, and insurance all have to be current. Uh, we do not work on rental properties uh, or within manufactured home communities, however. Uh, applicants can apply through our website. Uh, if they're not computer savvy, that's fine. We do have paper applications, and we can help them with that. Uh, if their project is approved, uh, they will sign a loan with the county. It's a deferred payment loan, no interest, no payments. Uh, it's not a cash loan to the homeowner, however. We are going to pay the contractors directly on their behalf. Uh, repayment of the loan will vary based on their income level and the age of the applicant. <coughs> so if the homeowner is under the age of 62, uh, a portion of their loan will be forgiven after seven years if their income is low enough, and the balance will become due when they sell their home or they transfer uh, ownership of the home. Works a little bit different for the homeowners that are 62 and up. Half the loan is forgiven right away, and the other half depreciates over five years and is forgiven. No interest, no payments. Um, the maximum amount that we can spend on each home is $24,999, uh, and participation is limited to one program. Uh, we cannot uh, allow homeowners to uh, go through both programs. Uh, the contractors that we work with are all vetted through the county. They're all licensed and insured, and um, these programs are funded through the county's annual allocation from HUD. So we use the CDBG and the home funding for these programs. Last year, we did complete 45 projects. 14 were the home improvement program projects. The other 31 were urgent repair projects. Uh, and we did spend over $752,000 on those projects. The bulk of the projects were roof replacements. Uh, we had 20 roof replacements, three septic replacements, seven wells, or 
water hookups and one furnace. So I looked back and since 2001, we have completed 36 projects here in the township. So that's why I'm here today, just to let you know about our programs. And if you know any residents that need help, uh, please give out our information. I've left flyers uh, outside in the lobby area and I, my card is attached to the paperwork that I left you. We are here to help. We work 12 months out of the year. Nicole, I noticed that it's basically CDBG funds that you're using for that. Mm -hmm. So it isn't depend where you can do work isn't dependent upon them Not at all. specific areas. Well, we don't work in the city of Flint, but okay. across the entire county. It's based on income. Right. You don't have to be in the low mod map area. It's throughout the county. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ms. Odette? Uh, sounds like a great program. I'm thinking that, you know, I, we probably referred a few people to this program over the past year or so, I, I believe. But um, this is great information to have on hand for people. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that, uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda next. Somebody cares to make that motion, Mr. Fike? Motion by, by Fike. Supported by Mr. White. Supported by White on the consent agenda. Trustee Fike? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. <coughs> Myself? Yes. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. <coughs> Seven nothing, motion passes. And now we will uh, discuss a strategic plan update with regard to our beautification. We have Ms. Uh, Roberts here to give us an update. Good evening. Um, we are definitely rolling with beautification, uh, which includes the community cleanup. That will be on April 27th from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We are going to be at meet at Faith Lutheran Church. They have very generously offered their building and their facility uh, for us to use. And we're pretty excited about that. We are working on some MTA buses to take our volunteers to their cleanup locations. Um, we currently have about 35 people signed up. <coughs> and we're signed up saying, uh, and my family, or, you know, there, there are some groups out there. So we're, we're hoping, really hoping, that we'll have about 60 participants, which would be about three times what we had last year. Um, our, both our uh, police department and our DPW have been very willing participants in helping um, with our community cleanup. They will uh, help keep us safe. We have uh, a company, and I think it's called CC Junk Removal, excuse me, I, I wish I would have written that down before I came in, um, that has offered a dumpster, which is very generous. Um, so we are going to put that um, out and we'll be able to clean, take the trash, unlike last year where we had to leave some of it out until MTERA could pick it up. This year, we'll have a dumpster to put it into. So very excited about that. And then our um, firefighters, whether they're willing or not, will be uh, grilling some hot dogs. <laughs> we, we I don't think you're on that day, Bill. Very good. We feel safer with them handling fire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, pretty much everybody has pitched in and it's been really nice. So we're really excited about this event and we hope to see all of you there as well, um, which I know many of you have already signed up. Um, as far as uh, the other part of beautification, which are the flower beds and the flower pots, um, we are waiting to hear on our community foundation grant application. So we're really hoping that goes through. Uh, we will hear mid-May on that is what I've been told. Um, Otherwise, we're moving forward, uh, getting our flowers ordered. Um, our bed at Saginaw and Baldwin, we're waiting to hear from the Road Commission on that, whether that's going to affect that one. And if it is, we're going to have to move it to a different corner. And um, so that'll be a little bit of extra work, but we're still going to beautify. Don't worry. <laughs> um, let's see. I think that's about it. So I've seen the firefighters practicing the grilling out right. front. They're good at it. That's yeah. why I asked yes. them. Um, with regard to the beautification, though, um, it's kind of a uh, little bit humorous in that we're getting emails and letters from uh, 
residents that asking us to clean up some areas that actually they probably unknowingly don't realize, but they're outside of Grand Blanc Township. So um, mm -hmm. asking us to clean up uh, north of us and over at Grand Blanc and uh, 23 Expressway, which is Monday Township. So we're passing those on to the neighboring uh, municipalities. But uh, it's nice that people are thinking of us that uh, <laughs> they would like us to spread our wings and clean up. Right. You know, we must be doing a good job. Yeah, so we're getting the word out that we're cleaning things up. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I was at a meeting uh, earlier today with uh, the Road Commission and had most of the other uh, townships there. And this is an issue that uh, spanned the cleaning up of the expressways and the, the exits and entrance ramps is something that uh, isn't just isolated up, obviously. And most of the communities are asking, how do we clean some of this up? You know, one of the issues that came up was even at 23 and 75 where you have the split is that in the middle there, it's just a trap for catching everything. And there, it's really not real safe for individuals to go out there on their own and, and try and clean up that stuff. So somehow um, countywide, we've got to figure out a way to, to do a better job of cleaning up some of those expressways. I know this week, I believe, started the, uh, you know, the sponsor of highway groups that are out there picking stuff up. But um, I think it makes a huge difference in our township. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, when I stop at some exits outside of our community, it's just pitiful how much trash is at the exits and entrance ramps. And I don't ever want uh, Graham Lake Township to, to look like that. And that's my concern and motivation to, to getting this done and right. making it look beautiful. But um, I appreciate your work. Melissa and all the great volunteers we have coming forward. We've got, I, I see the engineers, the uh, basically the robotics team uh, from Grand Blanc High School is volunteering, and um, a few other groups. I think of said like you, so and that's great. Also, um, Elga Credit Union has sponsored, okay. and yeah. um, Sam's Club is donating some water and condiments and chips and. We have a lot of people offering. Food Castle's going to donate yes. food, hot dogs, what have you. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, moving on to uh, new business our 2023 fire department year end report uh, is ready for us to uh, take a look at. We have Chief Burdett here. Oh, good evening. Through to uh, discuss the report. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, my part's going to be very short and sweet. I'm going to be turning over the operations to the deputy chief, and we also have other individuals to handle some other topics in here. But it was a busy year last year. Of course, 2023, we had a high call volume, and I know Deputy Chief Miracle is going to review that for you. Uh, but some of the things that we really did strategically was we have station number two all open and fully functioning now. Anyone, please go out and visit that station and take a look at it. It's really a beautiful building, uh, and I can't thank you enough for your support in getting that done. So, um, over the years, uh, we continue. To, I mean, we can still continue to work on the Dort Highway Fire and DPS building. Sorry, Greg. <coughs> and then, um, and as we begin to go into the future, this next year, I've challenged the officers to improve our ISO rating, our Insurance Service Office rating, so we can try to lower some of the insurance rates for some of these businesses and homes that we have. Uh, we're presently at a four, and we want to go up to a three. And as far as how much of a savings, we have no idea what that is. They won't even tell us, but it's just an improved rating, and it will lower the, the cost of the insurance. And of course, over the time, you've always provided the fire department with the highest quality equipment that we possibly could purchase. And in 2023, we went and we applied for two additional grants. One was for, uh, from the Genesee County, Shiawassee, uh, or Genesee, Shiawassee County Hundred Club. that allowed us to purchase two defibrillators for both the new stations being built in their fitness rooms. And also from the state of Michigan, we received a grant uh, to purchase handheld thermal imaging cameras. So we continue to look in. I, I know that Dennis shared with everybody just this year, we've already received two awards. So that'll be in for the next year's report. So I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Chief Merkel so he can talk about operations. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just going to go quick through. You guys, I think everybody's got, I think Chief handed out the. Yeah, we got everybody. Nice um, 
Last year, in 2023, we responded to 855 incidents throughout the year, so that's kind of, a, that's up from the last few years that we've had. There's an increase. Um, going through June of the year, June of 23 was the busiest month. And for the week, Monday was the busiest time of the week, with Tuesday being the slowest. Uh, Mondays were counted for 16% of the call volumes, and uh, the Monday or Tuesdays were 12%. 80% of the incidents occurred between 8 a.m. and midnight. This is the time when we start, Station 2 is only manned from 8 a.m. to midnight at this time right now, until hopefully we get a more development down on the other end. Um, it doesn't really, the times could increase, but it's not terribly yet because we don't have the call volume. Um, the fire departments, for the saves and losses for last year, the fire department saved 90% of the property value <coughs> that was involved in the fire during 2023. Uh, three major fires were accounting for 68% of the property losses. Um, three of them was, two of them were just residential structure fires and the other one was a commercial uh, residential which was a total was $848,000 for the loss of just that one property. Um, as far as the mutual aid program, we are in the mutual aid program with the whole county. So we will answer calls with other departments if they need help for manpower or equipment. Uh, we responded out 15 times and we had requested three times to have them come and help us. So that tells a lot about our department and stuff we have. Uh, in 2023, the fire department's goal, we set a goal for try to get in route in two minutes or less. Uh, from the time that dispatch to the time we get the scene, we wanted to be there within eight minutes. And I'll say that the fire departments, uh, the firefighters achieved the goal um, recording on an average time of one minute and 50 seconds, that is time for them to get on the truck, get, get dressed, get on the truck, and pull out of the station. It took them 150. Um, so that was, that was one of the goals that we set that we did achieve last year. The other one was the eight minutes, and the overall, the average travel arrival time once we left the station was five minutes. So a totaling for the whole, accumulated average for the whole year, we achieved seven minutes or less. So that was pretty much just the kind of a quick rundown on the operations part of the, if you have any questions okay. for that. Clerk Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Just uh, Chief Burdett mentioned the ISO rating and the desire to get us down to, th to a three. Mm -hmm. How close are we to that? What, what is involved in getting from four to three? And uh, are we getting there? Slowly. It, it takes time because they don't, they don't just, you can't just do it in a year. I understand. I mean, it takes, and we've been working on it for probably the last two to three years, really, because we've changed a lot of stuff, and a lot of it is data and collecting information on what they're looking for. Because some of the stuff we didn't have the complete data that they were exactly looking for from the past mm -hmm. records. So I might be able we've to actually yeah. picked up everything and tried to achieve all the data that they're asking for, which we're doing and, really and, good. And some of it, uh, from my from, uh, familiarity with it from the insurance side, but is that uh, it's up to, I mean, there's some municipalities that will never even get to this just because they don't have municipal water. That's so the number of fire fire hydrants you have, if you have, you know, neighborhoods or subdivisions that don't have adequate, you know, fire, uh, you know, water, water you know, access to water, um, run time. Four, four, four is an excellent rating, yeah. but, you know, uh, uh, if we can get to three, that's better still. This is something to work for. Yeah, no, that's fabulous. Any questions? The uh, so calculating out the uh, property save rate—that's basically um, ninety-five percent. So forty-eight million dollars yep. is the value. That's huge. That also saves on insurance locally. Yes, it does. <laughs> it helps. Which also factors into uh, the ISO rating. So, 
Well, well the, the report is uh, outstanding. It, it looks uh, fantastic, and uh, we're excited to have uh, Station 2 uh, rebuilt and looking forward to breaking ground on the new Station number 1. Yep. Um, also going to have uh, Lieutenant Oxford come up and talk about the training. Very good. Numbers and following him will be um, Captain Bill Larson. Okay. The other. Very good. Good evening. Good evening. So in 2023, uh, you know, we had a goal for training uh, to improve our numbers, uh, which also helps our ISO score. Um, the state requires each firefighter to do 12 hours of fire training annually. Um, our members had an average of 74 hours of training last year uh, per member. So we 74? 74 hours per person. Wow. Uh, we had a total of 2,694 hours spent uh, on fire ground training as an organization in 2023. Um, and our minimal requirement that we set out was 46 hours per member. Hmm. So our uh, firefighters really went above and beyond with their training um, because that is one of the aspects that we can gain ISO points in. Um, sure. The magic number um, to get perfect training score for ISO would be 168 hours per year per firefighter. Uh, it's a lofty goal, but that is the end, the end goal mm -hmm. that we want to be able to achieve. Um, some of the special programs uh, that we brought in last year, uh, we brought in a electric vehicle fire and rescue um, expert to kind of help us with the challenges we are facing with the um, electric vehicles, uh, where we can cut on them safely if someone is trapped in them, and also how to extinguish the lithium battery fires. Uh, they are a little bit more challenging than uh, your traditional uh, automobiles. So that was a great day of training um, that our uh, members got to um, uh, partake in. And then the other uh, specialized training that our firefighters went through uh, last year was a um, firefighter survival uh, writ training, which uh, taught firefighters how to rescue fellow firefighters if there was a um, building collapse or a firefighter went down uh, injured. So uh, it was a great year for training for the organization. Uh, you know, we strive to train so we can always be one of the best fire departments in the region. And uh, we're looking forward to what we can achieve this year. That is awesome, Mr. Rockford. That, that's fabulous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments for Lieutenant Oxford? Okay, thank you. Good evening. Fire Marshal Keller can make it tonight. He had other things going on, so I get to talk to you for a little bit. Hi, hey, Captain. So we're going to talk about um, the fire inspections and so forth. Fire inspections are uh, we go out to the business and make sure everybody's safe and our uh, customers and so forth. Um, going strong, starting off this year really good. Last year was, was an okay year, but we're really jumping into it more this year. Uh, with inspections and so forth, um, sometimes it's not just one inspection we go out because we do find some um, problems like exit lights is probably a, a big thing being out in storage. Um, so sometimes we have to go out again to, to re-inspect. Uh, Chris uh, took a total of 17 complaints that were investigated last year from uh, businesses. Those are usually complaints from uh, civilians maybe coming in, employees. Uh, people working on the hood system, they call in, they find something wrong. We go out there and talk to them and, and get things. <clears throat> Another big thing that we did last year was smoke alarms and carbon monoxide installations. In your package there, it shows that we installed 143 smoke alarms throughout the community. Uh, with that, we also installed 18 carbon monoxide detectors, and we went through and uh, gave out a bunch of batteries too. So if they had an alarm that needed a battery, went out there and installed the mat for them. We actually went out there and installed them for our customers. Uh, public educations, we, uh, last year through all the schools and so forth, we met 750 students that we actually got to talk to and talk a little bit about fire safety. 
Um, we also, some events that we went through is Camp Safety, National Night Out, and a bunch of neighborhood gatherings and so forth. A lot of people invite us out, we'll go out there, show them the fire truck, and all the stuff that we do. And that's going to be about it that, uh, for that. Any questions on the inspection program? Or? Uh, what's the goal in terms of uh, businesses, in terms of inspections, <coughs> in terms of how frequently is it we try to get around to them every two years? Or? That's a great question. So I'll make sure uh, Lieutenant Keller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No problem. Okay. We're actually taking a look at that um, and having a conversation uh, with Chris as we get ready to uh, roll out that business licensing that we've discussed as part right. of the strategic agenda and with the cloud-based BSNA. Uh, so part of that business licensing, we're talking about um, what would the frequency be? Because that, you know, we, we said a lot about it. So people get nervous when they hear that we're going to do business licensing, but it's going to be at a modest rate, but it does include those inspections. And it's important for these guys because their life's on the line when they're going in there and they need to know what to expect. And what can happen now before we get that in place is they're on their way to a fire. They think they know what's in that building, but it could be a completely different business that hasn't uh, come to us yet could be a change of use that involves planning or code enforcement or zoning issues and then the biggest thing is for an emergency responder to go in there a change of use could be critical because we don't know if they're storing 55 gallon drums of acetone now instead of a yarn shop or whatever I mean it's and it's going to give these guys the ability to know that and have that information on their way to the fire absolutely yeah, and when we do inspections we, we do engine inspections we take our truck out there so we have two guys on with us, mm -hmm. right? We go in. That way the other firefighters will actually know what the building is. So if we do have a fire there, it's just a lot more safe for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, and with, you know, the size of some of the buildings that we're having built to it, uh, could be very helpful to, a big one south of town. to know what is where inside those buildings. Yep. In fact, one of them had a small fire that turned into a bigger issue, right? Okay, any questions for Kevin Larson? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions overall with regard to the fire report? Chief, anything to follow up? I, 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 the yes, thing Treasurer Kilmer. say is these are the guys that do the work, the firefighters, so. Uh, I appreciate it. Fantastic job. When it comes to fire alarms, yes. how many are you supposed to have as far as the uh, to be in compliance. To be in compliance, you need one in every bedroom, one outside the bedrooms. In the hallway, there should be also a CO alarm uh, on every level of the home, and anywhere near you where you have open flames for carbon monoxide. Thank you. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, you do need those. Uh, again, thank you. So, okay, any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you to all your team, too, Chief. We appreciate their work greatly. <clears throat> okay, moving on to uh, eight B, item, eight. item B, under new business. Uh, the board will consider a motion to approve the natural gas service and gas meter upgrade proposal for fire station number two from Consumers Energy for $15,918.67 and authorize the township superintendent to execute all contracts, documents, and POs. Good evening, Mr. Boggs. Good evening. Uh, Director Cooley is uh, at training for the next couple days, so okay. you get me. So um, part of the renovation of Fire Station 2 was installing a new generator. Um, when we were doing the startup, we discovered that the gas service was too small to run the new generator. It was an afterthought. It was not even considered so we went to start it up so i had to call consumers see what the issue is they had to get the design team in saw that the meter is too small and the service is an inch and a quarter we need a two inch gas service so consumers design team has uh, sent over a proposal to in uh, install a new gas service and meter so we can sufficiently have emergency power at fire station two currently we have none so this is kind of a priority thing um, to get done so we, we make sure we're, we're covered in an emergency. So this is to put in the service as well as the meter? Yes, correct. It's to upsize it. Yeah. So. Any questions or concerns? Uh, we're lucky we even have a generator because uh, I'm familiar with uh, 
Drain Commission waited 26 months to be able to get a, a uh, generator. We ordered this October of 22. Yeah. And we got it delivered January of 24. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. And sometimes it's taken even longer. But. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any thoughts, concerns? Somebody care to make a motion? No. Mr. Fike? Mr. Fike makes the motion on item 8B. Supported by Ms. Hugo. Supported by Ms. Hugo. Uh, Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Uh, Trustee Hugo. Yes. Myself, yes. Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to uh, item C, the board will consider a motion to approve the purchase of six mobile hoists and attachments from Allied Incorporated for the amount of $109,771 and authorize the township superintendent to execute all contracts and documents and POs. Mr. Boggs. Um, so when we started um, looking at other facilities um, uh, to model our new DPW facility uh, after, we discovered that some of these uh, DPWs had something called a mobile hoist that, that are portable, they can lift commercial vehicles. We, we thought that, well, this is something we want to incorporate long term. Well, the way our mechanics are uh, kind of locked in the closet, if you guys, you know, been the township hall, they have a small confined space. We only have one hoist, and with all the work they're doing, having one hoist is really setting them behind on, on certain uh, things. So this is something that we can use long term when we renovate the existing DPW facility for them to move in, but this allows us to... Um, lift commercial vehicles. Um, they're portable. We can do it anywhere out in the parking lot, uh, in the taller barns, uh, and whatnot. And it, it frees up the just the single hoist that we have. Um, it comes with attachments. Uh, our guys went out, um, did the research on it. Um, this company that is allied, they're out of Ann Arbor. They sell a, a product uh, called Rotary. It's made by Rotary, uh, I think Rotary Incorporated. Um, so we went down there. Um, it's one size. Actually, it's um, actually versatile. The other hoist that we looked at, it's one size fit all. So it's only for commercial tires. We can shrink that down for, to lawnmowers, to uh, our uh, vector truck we can lift up. Um, it comes with uh, attachments, accessories. And um, the, the other two companies we looked at, they're out of state. So there's no way to service them, and they need to be inspected where... Uh, they're, they're a local vendor, um, and, and it's more bang for your buck. We got uh, attachments in here um, to, to be more versatile. Um, they run by uh, deep cycle maintenance batteries. Um, it's in the packet. Um, uh, everything was highlighted. It's, it's a pretty neat setup. With the amount of money that uh, our mechanics save uh, our budget by doing all the work that they do, and you know, I go back there frequently, and um, you know they have vehicle on a hoist, they might have to wait a few days for a part to come in and yeah. ties that thing up. Right. And the other nice thing is, we, like you said, these things are, are portable so that we're going to be able to move into future buildings or if we need to build the vehicles too big to fit inside, we can lift it outside. Correct. Um, so yeah, these things I think are... Each one of them can lift 18,000 pounds and they all sync together uh, via remote uh, wireless connection. So they all sync up together. They're, right. uh, they're, they're really neat. The amazing equipment. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? Anybody care to make a motion with regard to it? Ms. Hugo? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Item Raritan. 8C, motion by Hugo, uh, supported by Raritan. Item 8C, Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee Fike? Yes. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Myself? Yes. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Seven nothing. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Item D, the board will consider a motion to adopt the policies required for the Public Act 660 assessment roll audit for 2024. And we have Ms. Harrington here. Dr. Burr Sussing. Um, standard department procedures that the audit that we'll be going through this year um, is going to look for when they're completing and conducting their audit. Um, our job is to do this 
fair and equitable. These policies ensure that we're following the state guidelines, um, adopting that we have available hours to the public for um, review of our assessment records, um, a policy and procedure of our personal property canvas, and then how we work with adopting um, exempt businesses, 5013Cs and things like that to follow that policy as well. Okay, any questions? Make care to make a motion. I'll make the motion, Mr. Supervisor. Mr. White supports that. Motion. Just a comment first. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Ms. Harrington and her uh, department and also the volunteers we have that serve on the Board of Review. Um, that's not an easy job. Um, I don't know if any of you have been through the Board of Review, but um, they listen to residents, uh, you know, concerns that their taxes are too high or what it may be. But uh, we appreciate, you know, the work that you guys do with regard to listening to the residents and taking a second look at people's property. So thanks. Okay, go ahead, Clerk. Uh, Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Myself, yes. Uh, Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Seems like we ran out of agenda items here. Well, you can turn the page, Mr. Supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> well, future agenda items, we're going to uh, focus on parks and recreation facilities, and we have some exciting stuff that we're going to be talking about there and taking a look at what we've done so far over our term, but also looking at what we're going to do this summer. Um, also, with regard to... Um, you know, some new projects that uh, a couple of them are right there out in the hallway displayed um, and probably repair a few things from our uh, tornado that we had come through. But uh, going through board reports, uh, anything, Dr. Reardon? No. Report on Ms. Hugo? No. Okay. Mr. Kilmer? No. Clerk Robertson? Uh, no, sir. Nothing White. to report. White? Okay. Um, just a few things that... Uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, had up on the screen earlier, uh, this is Work Zone Awareness Week. Um, there was actually an informational gathering uh, at uh, Fessler Bowman, which is one of the new developments here in the township with uh, the Road Commission and MDOT and uh, consumers and several other entities uh, that met earlier today to highlight uh, this issue. You know, last year alone, there were 20 deaths in work zones here in Michigan. And uh, many of the deaths are actually the people driving through the, uh, in fact, the highest percentage of those are, of the deaths and injuries are people, uh, you know, driving through the work zones. Uh, unfortunately, there are, you know, workers there too that uh, get injured or killed. So um, we want people to be aware that there's a place that you need to slow down. The uh, 911 surcharge, um, it was 2017 when the surcharge was last increased on everybody's uh, cell phone bill and, and any landline, you'll notice $1.87 a month that uh, you're charged for your Genesee County 911 uh, service. So 2017, uh, you know, it not, wasn't that long ago, but when you look in terms of uh, inflation and the increase in costs, um, the radios that our police and fire uh, carry with them in their cars and on their person, the, the 911 consortium uh, purchased those for us. Uh, the price on those has doubled since 20, well, since we purchased them probably in 2018 or so. Well, you're looking at, you know, six dollars $8,000 a radio now that uh, we need to uh, cover the next time those things need replacing. Uh, the other thing is that just... You know, the cost of doing business has increased. The 911 consortium, which is made up of 31 municipalities, uh, voted to uh, in, in ask the voters to consider increasing that. The maximum that the state allows for a surcharge is $3 per month, and the consortium was asking the county board to, uh, to move and allow people to vote to increase it to $3. Currently, the... Uh, County Commission is uh, is taking a, a look at that and considering whether or not they'll allow it to go on there. Um, my only concern is that if, if they don't increase it, uh, currently the 911 is operating at a deficit this year. 
that deficit will increase uh, dramatically over the next year if we don't uh, get an increase in place. If the 911 service, and I know I've spoken of this before, but if the 911 service were to uh, go into the red or uh, not be able to pay its bills, they assess each municipality based on taxable value and population. Uh, the bill that would come due to the township could be close to a million dollars, be around $900,000 based on our current taxable value, which we haven't budgeted for 900000 I don't think, Mr. Limita, for, uh, if not. for paying for 911 service. Um, so that's not good. So we're encouraging the County Board of Commissioners to move quickly on their assessment of uh, reviewing that, that ask for an increase in surcharge. Uh, Genesee County 911 is uh, one of the five largest 911 uh, operations in the, the state. And many of these uh, 911 services actually have a millage in addition to um, a surcharge on the phone bill. Here in Genesee County, we only have a surcharge. We do not have a millage, and we would like to keep it that way. Um, actually, the state uh, legislature is looking at increasing that surcharge uh, limit because they, they realize that uh, departments are having a tough time actually making things work on that uh, dollar amount. With that, um, the, the big question when it comes to roads this summer is we're getting asked, hey, when's the road commission going to fix Cook Road? And uh, had a road commission meeting this morning and the answer to that question is that uh, they want to start it before the 4th of July. They're hoping in June sometime to uh, have that construction start. So um, the other thing with regard to roads, if you live on a gravel road, calcium chloride is very uh, is tough to get this year. The Road Commission feels they, they won't have a problem, but uh, it may be delayed, um, some of it getting on the road. But uh, they, they've been working very hard to uh, make sure that we're going to be able to chloride our, our gravel roads uh, three times uh, this year, which is normal. One of the things that also is being discussed uh, with regard to roads and funding is uh, something that's called MBUF. And I don't know if anybody's heard of it, but it's uh, mileage-based user fees. So with electric vehicles, um, obviously uh, gas taxes are what pays for you know, streets and roads as well as, you know, your, your license tabs. Uh, but when we're not, when we have vehicles that aren't using uh, fuel for driving and using electricity, there has to be some way to assess them. So they're looking at uh, what's referred to as MBUF, mileage-based user fee. It wasn't heard of too much, but in the last couple of weeks, uh, the talk has ramped up uh, in Lansing on, on doing something on this. So... I, I haven't seen how that will work, but it's just to realize that it's something that uh, we're going to be looking at, evidently, with regard to funding roads. Uh, just two last things. One is uh, the county recycling center. Uh, the county has, you know, periodic events where they, you know, publicize uh, recycle days, you know, that you can meet at certain places. Well, they've actually found a location. It's the former uh, dairy on Longway Boulevard in 475 that uh, they're going to utilize for a permanent site for uh, recycling. So you're going to be able to take batteries and all the stuff that you normally couldn't put in a regular recycle. You're going to be able to take it up there eventually. Uh, one last thing also is, uh, I'll be passing this along, but uh, there's a broadband initiative with they're asking residents to do throughout uh, our township is to test their their internet speeds at their home and business and to uh, send in the results. And there's steps on how to do this. Uh, they're asking that you not do it on your cell phone because it gives an inaccurate reading. What they want to know is what uh, the strength of the services throughout the uh, township, um, you know, based on. Uh, you know, your wired service, not wireless internet. Um, with that, that's uh, all I have. And uh, Mr. Laddie, anything? No, I do see that you have a closed session um, on your agenda. Yes. Mr. Lima, anything you want to address before we go into closed session? I just let the board know that we're still going through the process of the fiscal year 2023 financial audit. The auditors have wrapped up the on-site 
Um, they'll still, uh, probably somebody will be back. One will be back to just wrap up a few things, but uh, congratulations or hats off once again to our finance director, Kathy Sostak and her team uh, for working through this thing. Our preliminary conversations with the audit team, uh, everything looks uh, great like you would expect it. <coughs> Cooperation is there. They've got the information that they need. So we're on track. You'll be seeing that in June like uh, normal. And the OPEB actuarial, I was hoping to have it before this meeting. Unfortunately, I don't. Should see it this week uh, for that update so that you know where we are on the OPEB uh, legacy costs and uh, what kind of progress we've made. Um, and I will have that for you at the next meeting to report uh, that. I, I expect to see good things. Very good. Very good. Any question for Mr. Limita? Just. Uh, just real quick, uh, Mr. Lehman, I know that uh, you and Mr. Boggs may have information. With regard to the KCI, uh, the, uh, the question earlier was, you know, with regard to that, that project, do you know, are they planning to pave any roads after they're done? Or There is no, uh, there hasn't been any discussion whatsoever about paving the road. Um, again, this is Genesee County Drain Commission project. And uh, it's not going to be running. There may be cases where it's crossing the road or, or getting bored underneath it, but uh, they won't be tearing up Vassar Road or anything where they it'll be going through the right of way. Okay. And with regard to uh, the intersections at Baldwin and uh, Saginaw Street and also Baldwin and Holly, um, I'm aware of uh, the, the traffic. I was there this afternoon, and uh, the traffic is backed up a little ways. <clears throat> and maybe we can talk to the road commission about uh, maybe taking a look at the timing on that left turn light to turn. What's happening is with the construction on I-75, a lot of people are taking Dixie Highway or Holly Road or what have you, and they're wanting to get back on the expressway, and so they're taking Baldwin Road to get over to the Holly entrance. So um, <clears throat> maybe we can talk to the road commission about doing something with the timing on that left turn light. On There is no left turn, obviously, at Holly and Baldwin. Uh, maybe take a look at both those for the summer because it's probably just we're just seeing the start of it right now it's going to get a little bit crazier okay i think uh, that addressed some residents concerns um with that uh i'll make the motion that we go into a closed session motion by bennett mcl 15.267 no, i will support that motion mr Supervisor. Board, consider employment contracts okay, okay. trustee fike yes trustee white yes Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Seven nothing motion passes. We enter in closed session at 6.57 p.m. Okay.